Morning, it's a deal for Zal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for ended base trading session Monday, the 21st of August 2017. Okay, uh, it was a negative day today, a FTSE down 5 points, 7318, German DAX down 100 points, down 0.8%, French CAC under pressure, FTSE MIB, IBEX all under pressure. Now, in terms of uh, the overnight session, you had the uh, Nikkei lower, uh, whilst the uh, the actual uh, Shanghai and Hang Seng certainly were higher. Uh, overnight, we had the concerns or risk off mood in terms of the uh, uh, North Korean situation potentially uh, spiraling out of control again, potentially, although it certainly has been muted for the last few days uh, and it's all been about Mr. Trump. Uh, Mr. Bannon obviously got fired on um, the uh, uh, over the weekend, basically on Friday night, and, and again, that was certainly interpreted what was supposed to be interpreted as being risk positive. But it certainly hasn't uh, fed through that way thus far, with the S&P certainly touching 24.17 uh, in the evening tonight. So uh, U.S. markets certainly trying to catch a bid uh, again. Uh, let's see if they can actually follow through on that. It will be interesting to see if they can. Uh, we are now into the last hour. Let's see uh, if that uh, weakness or, or strength comes through. OK, now in terms of uh, the European markets certainly were uh, under pressure due to the euro. Euro back above the 1.18 level. Again, with last week's ECB leak indicating potential uh, Draghi uh, remaining where he is, remaining neutral, stroke uh, erring on the side of dovishness, certainly not contributing towards the uh, hawkish uh, stance. And that certainly has been uh, debunked this week with the euro obviously rising above 1.18. Even though Mr. Mnuchin certainly did try to talk up tax reform, etc., that certainly failed to uh, allow the dollar to rally and uh, push higher, which in turn obviously is generally uh, indicating a, a lower euro dollar. And that hasn't happened either. So let's see how the markets unfold. Let's continue to, con to actually um, witness the markets and let's see uh, how it unfolds and allow the market to play out. OK, so euro USD is really the culprit for the weakness in Europe today, from my understanding. You can see here 1.174, we've bounced off that key support here at 1.169 and we've certainly hit that upper zone at 1.1830. So interesting, OK, especially with the dollar index as well. If you look at the dollar index after Mr. Bannon was fired, and that's certainly from my interpretation anyway, we certainly were looking to potentially pounce and move higher, given the fact that Mr. Bannon was was really the radical figure in Mr. Uh, Trump's potential uh, side. So uh, again, interesting uh, where we are right now. Uh, German, or should we say the dollar itself? You look at the four-hour chart, the dollar index. Now, uh, I certainly were looking. Was certainly looking. Was looking for a higher low, and then obviously a higher high, potentially here reaching this point here, which in turn sends a euro lower, which in turn obviously helps European equities, and that certainly hasn't transpired at all, unfortunately. So let's see how the market unfolds. So keep an eye on the dollar index. Especially on the, you at the daily chart, you can see here we put in a pivot low, close that gap below, and now looking for a potential rally in the back of obviously uh, the focus being back on the potential tax reform and infrastructure spending as well, especially after last week's shenanigans in, uh, in in Washington. So again, we're still waiting for that. And again, that will be the potential catalyst for the rally as well. If I bring up the S&P 500, it certainly does show you here. Okay, S&P 500, you can see we've put in a potential double bottom here at 24.20 now. At the daily chart at the moment, certainly holding a doji pattern. You can see here bottoming tail, hot potential support here now in this zone. If we do continue to fall, you have 24.10 support and you have support at 2400 as well. So let's see how the market unfolds in terms of the S&P, especially given the fact that we have put in a potential bottom at 24.20. Okay, so that certainly is a scenario. Mr. Draghi on tap this week in Jackson Hole. Uh, again, keep an eye on the euro. Look for the next potential move in the European equity market. OK, you can see here it's German DAX from a technical perspective. You can see a German DAX here. Uh, certainly went and potentially closed that gap at 12.010, 12.020, and then subsequently has bounced. The daily chart, the German DAX, again, closing that gap. You can clearly see here and now potentially into support. There was a potential inverted head and shoulders formation that I was certainly focusing on. Especially given the fact that Mr. Draghi, uh, the leak uh, last week, Mr. Draghi was certainly going to be dovish. Uh, the right shoulder obviously forming and then obviously looking for a potential pop. Now, given the fact that we've actually retraced, uh, if you look at the fib retracement, we've traced 75% now for the right shoulder. It's not exactly healthy, okay? It certainly isn't healthy for a right shoder. You want a fib 38 or a 50% retracement at most. 
and then obviously a continuation higher especially with this uh, potential falling contracting type wedge pattern okay so uh, again given the fact that we held that double bottom here at 11940 uh, shook out a lot of the longs and now obviously you're looking for a potential short squeeze and that would have been ideal you do have that unfilled gap above at 12770 and that would be your potential target that hasn't transpired thus far with the euro moving higher that will not transpire if the euro continues to move higher if draghi is, is hawkish and the markets are interpreting it as being hawkish now we did have the bundesbank come out today they were talking up german growth they were talking up inflation so again maybe that hasn't had an impact thus far and negated the ECB leak from last week with regards to Mr. Draghi being dovish. Okay, so let's just continue to uh, observe and let's see what the market uh, does and, and what it tells us. Okay, for now, we've certainly closed that gap. I'm, I'm interpreting that gap as being support at 12015. If that were, were to give way, then you have support at 11930. So there are your two zones. Obviously, if you break 11930, then it opens up the downside. Okay, 10 minute chart, German DAX. Again, previous resistance equals support. You do have an unfilled gap above at 12,165, and then you have an unfilled gap at 12,200. Now, both of those gaps are in play, okay? Both of those gaps are in play, providing the euro can actually start to retreat, okay, and allow the uh, exports to certainly flourish in the eurozone, which in turn helps growth and creates jobs, okay? So it's, it certainly is currency wars on a global scale. Okay, now let's move on to the French CAC. Again, I'm not going to explain why it's moved lower. You already know why. Uh, and that's obviously due to the inverse relationship it has with the euro. You can see here we've certainly closed that gap below as well. North Korean concerns. Uh, it certainly seems that even Mr. Bannon being fired, it certainly isn't being interpreted as being bullish. Um, obviously, Mr. Trump's potential, uh, well, Mr. Trump's camp is in disarray. Whether you want to interpret it as that, okay, or whether you interpret it as being bullish, the fact that Mr. Bannon is now gone, and therefore Mr. Trump can now focus back on policy. Okay, so. We have potential support here, gap fill at 5060, looking for a potential bounce, unfill gap above at 5140, and then resistance is seen at 5200. So let's see how uh, the French CAC certainly plays out. Now, the 10 minute chart, you can certainly clearly see here, we push lower, close that gap. Okay, now potentially two gaps open. First gap is at uh, 5 1, around the 5 1 15 zone, and the next one is at 5 1 50, 45. And let's see if we can close those gaps above, provided the euro starts to move lower. Okay, so keep an eye on the euro, keep an eye on the dollar index as well, because that dictates too. Okay, now in terms of the FTSE 100, given the fact that we've covered a lot of the European indices, let's just look at the FTSE. FTSE certainly hitting a double bottom. Okay, certainly stabilizing here, hitting a double bottom. Let's see if we can certainly build a base and now start to project higher. The first potential gap that you'd be targeting. Uh, would be the unfilled gap here at 7390 so that would be the zone that you'd target uh, from a, a 10 minute charts perspective okay 60 minute chart you can clearly see that we have multiple multiple levels of support here at 7304 so this is a zone that you certainly don't want to be adding to your shorts if anything you want to be covering to covering your shorts if you've obviously shorted higher above okay so again 7300 is a solid solid support zone if anything, the FTSE 100 probably is the most bullish out of all the indices at this juncture. Okay, daily chart. Obviously, you can see here previous resistance equals support, and this is a zone that we're consecutively seeing bounces from. Okay, so I think that's a good summation, really, of uh, the uh, European indices. Uh, from my perspective, certainly looking for a bounce. Uh, obviously, if the euro starts to climb, then that certainly negates that argument and that theory, and my analysis is void. Uh, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye now.